Hello and welcome back to Ollie Knits. In this tutorial we're going to go over how to make a quilted or checkered blanket using your Centro knitting machine. This particular blanket we are making up is going to be for the Keller Williams Dynamic R2B otherwise known as the red and black blankets. Blankets will be distributed to the needy in old age homes within areas that the agents operate which currently is between Pole and Claymont in the Western Cape, South Africa. If you are a knitter in these areas and you would like to contact Rolene Camper from Keller Williams Dynamic, all the contact details are available on Google. Alternatively, you can message me directly on Instagram and I can put you in touch with her. The colors we're gonna be using for this particular project are the black and the cherry red from Charity Knits. It is the double knit and I have been given two balls of each, so that's 100 grams per ball times four, 400 grams. To get going, you're going to need all of those balls of wool. You'll need a pair of scissors, a darning needle, a crochet hook, and if you do not have a centro knitting machine and you would like to do this by hand, the centro knitting machine converts to a US needle size four to five. The first thing you'll want to do is mark your 21st stitch because when we cast on our stitches now we're going to cast up to this point which will leave us with 20 stitches and we're not going to go past this point but we need to see this point in order to keep our row neat and tidy. You want to make sure that you're in the panel setting and you're going to crank clockwise until you arrive at the white tooth over here. So we're going to go clockwise and now we can't go any further because we're in panel and here is our first tooth. We're going to cast on from the tooth that is elevated here. And we're going to grab our waist yarn now and we're going to cast on stitches all the way through to that tooth that we've marked over here. You're going to wrap the wool around or underneath the first tooth that's up here. So we're going to go under there and we're now going to crank anti-clockwise and we're going to take the wool and put it behind the next tooth under the following tooth behind under behind under behind and so on like this until we get to that tooth that we've marked out and we know that that's how far we want to cast on once we get to that tooth, we're going to take our waist yarn and we're going to put it through this tension gauge holder and we're going to go in the opposite direction. Making sure that the wool has actually caught the tooth in front of it, that's very important. And now we're going to go back. Back until the beginning, until you can't crank anymore, you physically can't move this cranker. And then we're going to take a little bit of tension, we're going to hold it like this, pull it a tiny bit, and then we're going to go backwards again. This time we're cranking anti-clockwise, going back towards that tooth. As you arrive at that tooth, you're going to go a little bit past it, and you're going to let it sink into the mechanism. So you can see here, the tooth the tooth has sunk down into the mechanism and we're now going to reverse back again and as I come back you'll see it doesn't actually catch that tooth it catches the one behind it once you've cranked out about five or so rows you can add this into your tension gauge and you can continue to crank out your waist yarn until you've reached about 20 rows. This is a good example of why it's important to use waist yarn. So as you can see, we started casting on here and we uh, cranked out, knitted these rows. And these first rows were a little bit loose. You can see all these stitches here um, they're not neat, they're not tidy, and they weren't for quite some time. I'd say this is most probably around 15, 16, somewhere between 15 and 20 rows. So 
This is why it is very important to first cast on with your waist yarn because after here you can see all of these stitches are very neat, they're very nice, they're very tidy and this joinery it just keeps going, it looks lovely. So yes, important. Once you've cranked out all of your waist yarn, you're now going to come in with a few pegs and you're just going to peg the edges here. The reason we're doing this is because it's going to pull this down a little bit. It's going to add a little bit of weight and that's just going to make it um, so that these stitches over here, they don't pop off because that can happen. You need to keep an eye on these and make sure that they don't pop off because yeah, this is a problem with the panel setting. You can then cut your waist yarn like so. And you're going to come in with your working yarn now. So what we're going to do is we're literally just going to take this out, put it there, and we're going to grab our working yarn and feed it in through here, like that, through the gauge um, holder. And then holding this end here and this end here, this part here, we're going to hold them together for the first few cranks and we're just going to crank that in. At this point you can let that other piece go and you can crank your working yarn in. At this point now, it's extremely important to keep track of how many rows that you're cranking. With the waist yarn, it wasn't that important. You could sort of go, you could guess. Um, but with the working yarn, particularly with this pattern that we're using, if you don't pay attention to how many rows you're cranking, when you try and sew up the panels later, they're not going to align and it may look a little bit funny. Um, if you don't really mind that, that's perfectly fine. But if you do, if this is for a client, then yeah, you're going to need to keep track of your rows. You can go through your apps and you can pick one, whichever one works for you. I use this top one here, this one that says row counter, knit and crochet, the little one that's red and it says 26. This one here. Um, and it works perfectly fine for me. Generally speaking, I'll have something you can see up here in the top right hand corner, it says all projects. So I just use this. If you go down to the bottom left hand corner in settings, at the top here, uh, there's a little circle and a zero. You can press that and it's going to reset that counter. Then we go back again and it looks like this. We have just cranked our two rows, so we're going to put that on the marker. And I'm now going to keep cranking for 30 rows. So here's a good example of why it is so important to make sure that you have a row counter and you count your rows properly. Um, so this blanket in particular I'm making for a charity organization and the unalignment is not really a big deal. But here you can see I sort of was mindlessly cranking in some areas and in some places it's perfectly lined up like here you can see it looks good and in other areas looking good there um, like here there are more rows here or less rows here and it hasn't actually lined up properly so this is the reason why you need a row counter and you need to actually be mindful of your row counter and keep track okay so we've cranked out 30 rows now and we're ready to add the next color just the same way that you switched over from your uh, waist yarn to your working yarn. I'm just going to do a little snip, pull that out, take this out, pop it in toward the middle of the drum area. And then you're going to take your new color, put it in there, hook it into your um, gauge, um, gauge holder, and you're going to grab both ends like this. You can see what I'm doing here. I've got both ends like that, and I'm now going to crank this in until that end pops out from my, from my fingers. Crank the new one all the way to our marker to tooth, and then we're going to go back 
again. Okay, so we've done 30 rows again in our second color and we're ready to go back to the next color if you whatever color pattern you're going with. I'm going to be doing checks of black and red. So just like we did previously, we're going to snip the black now, add on the red, crank out 30 rows, go back to black, back to red, back to black. Another thing with Centro knitting machines in particular is that when you're knitting in the panel setting, your first and your last tooth have a tendency to drop their stitches. It happens all the time and because of this, I highly recommend that you resist the urge to crank very quickly. You just want to take your time, especially when you're going past those first three to four teeth. Just crank, crank very slowly and like I mentioned a lot, you just want to pull this here. Just sort of yank on it a bit, give it a little bit of tension, just to make those first couple of stitches really tight. And on top of that, as you're approaching the first and the last stitch, when you get to it, you just sort of want to, as it starts to come up, go onto that stitch where the wool is caught around the tooth and push that wool down so that it doesn't jump and hop off the tooth. Here's a little example of what I mean. So as I'm approaching, I'm just going to push this wool back down here and make sure that it goes down and it stays down. And you also just want to maybe give like a very gentle, not a vigorous, a very gentle tug to these beginning and end pieces here just to make sure that it's all down flat and there's no opportunity for these things to pop off because trust me that happens and it's incredibly frustrating. Um, your your central knitting machine would have come with a little crochet hook and it comes with one of these. I also recommend you just have those ready handy so that if for any reason those first or last stitches do pop off, you can literally just catch it and shove it back onto the tooth and then just make sure that you're feeding that wool down as you come back around and that it stays caught inside there because this is just something that happens. It is definitely an issue that I have with this brand in particular. I haven't tried an Addy and I, I've never tried one of those flat, um, more professional knitting machines, but with Centro, this is an ongoing issue um, of one of some. I'm probably gonna bring up a few others. Another thing that can happen very easily when you are knitting in the panel setting um, on the centro knitting machine in particular again I don't know about other ones um, and you've got long panels like we have with our blanket um, is internal stitches can pop off and I know that you can just pick those up and feed them back on if you want to but what I do and you may want to as well is I'll literally just take that off and I will pick it up and I'll knit it by hand over here you can see one of the internal stitches has popped off and to be fair with you, yes I can just go and pick this up now and bring it back up onto the um, tooth but I actually just find it easier to take all of this off and then I'll pick this up on the needles and I'll knit this out. Um, it's also a good indication or should I rather say an opportunity for you to figure out what needle size you are knitting in when you when you are knitting on your um, knitting machine so for example when I pick this up now I'm going to pick them up with a pair of circular size US 4 needles and I've actually done that in many instances where it's popped off just like a block or two blocks away from the end and then I've knitted out the rest and you can't tell the difference which is great so um, I'm now going to show you in this particular instance an example of how to cast off once you've knitted out the number of blocks that you are happy with. Um, in this particular blanket it is six blocks, three red and three black. And I'm going to show you now once you've knitted out all of that we're going to say hypothetically I have knitted out all of that and how you would cast off now. So the first thing you would do is your wool would be here, you would take it out from your little tension gauge and you would just loosen it up just so that it's not catching anymore and you'll crank the first row out 
and once you've cranked that row out it's going to look like this where the stitches will still just be loosely caught on each tooth but they won't be caught underneath the tooth and when you get to this bit now you can come in with your knitting needles and you can pick them up I like to use circular knitting needles because I can just get around, I can get into them a little more easily because this little needle part is smaller, um, it's easier to fiddle around inside there and then also if for any reason I pick up the stitches back to front, so say the part where I would start knitting is on the wrong side, I just simply move the stitches over to the other side. I personally just prefer circular knitting needles for almost any project whether it's going to have any round knitting or flat panel knitting just like circular knitting needles so let's get in there and pick up those stitches okay so we're going to have our circular needles ready and we're going to have our little darning needle ready and we're going to come in here and we're going to pop these stitches off and onto the needles I'm just going to take these little end bits off here. We don't use them when I need them. There we go. And I just stick my needle here and I use my darning needle and I just sort of pop them over and on. Like so. Like that. See. We're now going to knit this first row until we get to our little drop stitch. So a regular uh, stockinette stitch which is knit on the one side and pull on the other side. I just move that stitch around there because it was back to front and we're almost there. Okay and now we're going to pick that stitch up. Okay so you're going to grab a crochet hook and you're just going to stick it into that drop stitch and you're going to go for the little uh, loose end behind it and pull that through with your crochet hook into the next one pull that through the next one I'm just going to stick my crochet hook in again at a better angle pull that through And I think we are ready to go for the red now. I'm going to go for the red stitch and pull that through. And then you're going to put that back onto your needles. And your crisis has been averted. You've now picked that up nicely. When you've cast off your panel, you'll just need to give this whole thing a bit of a shaking. Because once it comes off the knitting machine, the stitches tend to be a little bit compressed and they'll just need to be loosened up. This one's already been shaken. And then you'll make as many of these as you want to. I have worked off four balls of 100 gram wool. And I'm just going to use them all up until they have, yeah, until then that will be the whole blanket. Um, one thing I do want to mention is that if you are using two colors like I am just remember to alternate the first block so for example I've got the black and the red this one started with red the next one will need to start with black so that when we join them it makes this checkered pattern because if you start with the same color each time it's just going to make a colored stripe and it's not going to make a pattern if you go for more than two colors that's also fine just work out your sequence and make sure that you're always starting with the right color wool and you're going to knit out all of these panels, however many you would like. Four balls of wool is a good 
good size blanket and then we're going to join them together and make the blanket. Here's an example of a panel that's come right off the machine and you can sort of see what I mean by the stitches are still quite tight and I'll shake it out for you and show you exactly how big it gets. So here it is now. And that's after shaking it, so it almost doubles in size. Okay, so once we've got all our panels made up, we're going to join them together and I'll show you how now. For this part, we're going to need scissors, a darning needle and a little bit of yarn. It doesn't necessarily have to be in the same color, but it's probably just helpful if it is. You can thread your darning needle. And you can grab your two panels starting from the side where you have um, cast off nicely, not from the other side where we cast on with the waist yarn. And you're going to grab the two alternating colors and put them together. Then we're going to come up in through the first stitch. For me, I'll look for the first perfect line. So if you look here, this line looks quite nice and neat and it's just prettier. Um, technically the one before that over here is the actual first line. But it doesn't really look that nice. So we're going to go in from the one that does look nice over here. And you're going to come in from behind into that first stitch. Pull it through but not all the way through. You can grab the other side now and the exact same thing applies. So you can see here this line doesn't look very neat and tidy. So I'm going to go in for the next one that does, which is this one here. And we'll go in from behind into the first stitch and pull it through. You can then grab one of the ends here and the end of the yarn that you're working with and just tie them together. We're now going to go back to the first panel and we're going to go in to this stitch here. So if you look very carefully, a stitch is sort of horse, horseshoe shaped. You can see that looks a bit like a horseshoe, like that. So in between the two stitches, there's this horizontal stitch. This one here I'm talking about. I'll show you another example of that now. Pull them apart, you can see them a little bit easier. These horizontal stitches here those are the stitches we're going to be working in now so you're going to go in and under through that side and then you're going to zig back to the other panel and do the exact same thing and zig back to first panel and again do the same thing at this particular moment you don't need to pull these stitches tight you can just leave them a little bit loose like this in fact it's better if you do this by the way is called a mattress stitch this particular technique and it is incredible because why it is almost completely seamless, all it is seamless, if you look here. You can't really see that these are multiple panels that have been sewn together. They look like they've all been knitted together. Once you've done a significant amount of stitches like this, for example, that many is a good enough, a good, a good number, you can hold on to the bottom and you can pull the top and just pull them nice and tight. Pull it all the way through and it's going to bond these two sides together perfectly. So you can see, just beautiful, seamless. 
On the other side, it looks like that, but this is the wrong side. No one really cares. It's no big deal. This side is all we care about. And we're now we're going to do that all the way up. We're going to complete the whole panel from this side till we get to these um, pieces over here. And I'll show you what to do when we get there. All our panels have been sewn together and we're now ready to finish it off. But let me first show you exactly how big four balls of 100 gram balls of wool gets you. As you can see, that's quite big. It would be perfect for a knee blanket or a child's bed, but I think for maybe a single bed or a small double bed, we'd have to use eight balls of 100 gram wool. We're now ready to finish off and we're going to tackle all of these little bits here. If you would like to reuse this wool, you'll have to go up here and unpick this out and just carefully unravel it. But for some reason, the area where you've cast on with your knitting machine is just a lot more complicated to unravel. It's not simple. You've got to sort of really fight with it. It's a lot easier to, to unravel it from the other side where you've cast off. Um, and for this reason, I generally don't have the patience. And I usually just come in and I'll cut it around here. About one or two stitches above the actual working yarn. And then I'll just pull those ones out instead. Uh, but yeah, if you want to save this wool, that's that's up to you. But then you'll have to just pull all of this out intricately. So I'm going to cut it now and then we're going to pick these stitches up and we're going to put them on our needles. And then once you've got all of your stitches picked up and put on your needles, you can just cast it off regularly. Um, I had a little bit of red left, so I just knitted that on as well, and now I'm going to cast this off. Machine knitting may be loads of fun, and it's definitely a lot faster. For example, this blanket took me about 12 hours in total to make. If I had hand knitted it, it probably would have taken somewhere between one and two weeks. But the trade-off is that the stitches won't always be perfect. It can sometimes happen that the stitches bundle up without you noticing and that will result in things looking a bit like this, for example. Or let me find a better example. Here you can see. Um, so if you don't really mind that, then it's loads of fun. And um, coming up, I've got a really cool tutorial where I'm going to show you how to make a little cardigan on your knitting machine. What we're going to make is going to look a little bit like this one. So make sure that you're subscribed so that you don't miss out on how to learn how to make this. 